Welcome back to Seth and John C. And today we're going to talk about mountain biking. Our friends have asked us how to get started mountain biking and Seth is the expert in all things biking so he's going to let us know. Hi, I'm Seth. I'm John C. With our son Eman and our dog Luna. How do you get started mountain biking? You're going to need a bike. 2020 has made that difficult for a lot of bike manufacturers, a lot of bike shops, but there are still bikes out there. You just got to find them. A couple places to look are Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. Pink Bike has a buy sell section that's really good for high end stuff, for used bikes that are in really, really good condition. I have a link in our description for a list of bicycle project, bicycle co op places all over the United States. That's pretty cool. Check that out if you're looking for that. There's a great place here in Boise called Boise Bicycle Project. They rebuild bikes and sell them. You can also go there and buy all kinds of parts, anything you can imagine. They're pretty great. The first place you should look is your local bike shop. They are going to have all of the knowledge, tell you where to go, what to buy, the best bike for the area that you're in. They'll have all of your questions already answered. They'll be your best friend. Be prepared to spend your money there. They're probably the most helpful people that you'll find in your area. You can probably just ride whatever you have. If your bike looks like this, it's probably fine. You can take it out on some green trails. We'll talk about what that means later. Don't ride any black diamonds on your clapped out dad bike. Your goal here should be to get outside, have fun and get some exercise. You don't need to kill yourself. That also applies to climbing those big hills. Don't be afraid to get off your bike and push it up the hill. It's totally fine, especially for beginners. When your coworkers ask you how your weekend was, you can say, I'm sore from riding my bike and you'll look like a badass. It's that easy. The next step is safety. Number one safety thing is helmet. You have to wear a helmet. Always wear your helmet when you're on your bike. Doesn't matter where you're going, how short of a trip you're going on, always wear your helmet. Number one concern for a helmet is it has to be comfortable. The safety ratings are all the same for every single bike helmet. Just find one that's comfortable, try a bunch of them on, whatever's comfortable, that's the best one for you. Pro tip for people with hair. If you like to wear your hair braided, make sure you have it in a braid when you go to try on helmets. This is a Kali Chakra. It was my first helmet. I replaced it because it was a couple years old and the white straps kind of turned to this gross brown yellow color from being sweated on so much. This is a Troy Lee Designs A1. You can see that it comes down a lot more in the back. Mountain biking actually has potential for you to crash backwards. Sounds crazy. Don't worry about it. You're a smart person. You won't do that. So the back comes down farther to protect the back of your head more, which is a plus. Again, same safety ratings as any helmet. This Troy Lee Designs helmet has MIPS. MIPS is a cool technology that helps protect your head from side to side crashes. Be prepared to spend between $50 and $100 on a bicycle helmet. Just find one that's comfortable. Don't worry about the price. You only get one head. Second safety tip is gloves. This is a pair of firm grip gloves from Home Depot. You get three of them for $10, three pairs for $10. These gloves protect your hands. They're not super confidence inspiring, but they will protect your hands if you fall. If you fall, you want to you put your hands out in front of you, protect your face. This is a Giro Merino wool glove. It was about $35 on Amazon and it was great. It is super grippy on my grips. It feels very good on the bike, but it started falling apart after about 400 miles of use. So these are fast house wheeler gloves. These are pretty grippy, but don't offer a ton of protection or any warmth at all. It's just mesh on the back, but pretty nice leather palm. These are pretty nice when it's 90 degrees out and you're sweating like a demon. Hardware store gloves are totally fine and they will last you a long time. 
They will also be nice when you have to move stuff off of the trail. I always wear gloves when I'm riding. It's the first thing that I grab when I'm getting ready for a ride. Safety tip number three is glasses. Glasses are gonna protect your eyes. I got mud in my eye. Any old glasses are gonna protect your eyes. In the winter, when I could be riding when it's dark, I'll carry a pair of clear safety glasses. In the summer, just whatever sunglasses I have. I think these were $12 from the grocery store about five years ago. These Rock Bro glasses will get a little bit darker in the sunlight and will be lighter when it's dark out. Safety tip number four, lights. You don't need lights if you're not riding in the night time. The only time I ride at night is in the winter when the days are shorter. So probably don't need to worry about lights just getting started. Tools. I think tools are a part of safety. I like to be prepared and carry tools and be able to fix stuff on my bike. Bikes aren't very intuitive and you need to learn how to fix stuff before you can just do it. But one, the one thing that you should be able to fix on the trail is changing a tube. A changing a tube is really easy. All you need is a tube and a tire lever. Step number five for safety is riding buddies. It's awesome to ride with a, another person, share the stoke, share the suffering on those big climbs, share those experiences of descending. And later you get home, you have someone to back you up when you exaggerate to your spouse about the big hill that you climbed or how fast you climbed it. You will also have someone to call 911 for you when you crash. You might crash and that's okay. Crashing is inevitable when you're learning how to ride a bike. An advanced skill is learning how to crash so you don't get hurt so much. The next step in mountain biking is where do you go? Where do you go? There's a lot of options out there. Honestly, your best bet is the internet. The internet has all the information you could ever want and lots of things you don't want. A quick place to look is Facebook. Your city or your area probably has a specific Facebook group where you can get on there, see other people's recommendations. Strava is another resource. I use it to track how many miles I do, how much elevation I do. You can also follow other people on there. You can stalk local people that do some big trails and you can steal their ideas. They probably had fun, so you probably will too. My favorite app is called MTB Project. It's just a map. It shows you the trails. It shows you the elevation profile, how many miles, other people have posted pictures on there. MTB Project is great. It will show you trail ratings. So there's green, blue, and black. Green is the easiest, blue is the medium, black is hard. Starting out, I recommend starting on a green trail. Look at the elevation profile. If the elevation profile looks like this, you're gonna have a hard time. If the elevation profile looks like this, that's a trail that you should start out on. Another thing to look for in places to go are trail guides. Your local outdoor store is gonna have trail guides. REI, even my local Army Navy store, sales trail guides. The local guys that have written trail guides, they'll give you really good information, driving directions, seasons to do them in. Look up your local trail guide writers and be their friend and buy their books and their calendars. What to wear. You can wear whatever you want to on your bike. Something that is stretchy and flexible is nice, but you don't need to wear skin tight Lycra all the time. This is one of my favorite shirts. It's from Walmart. I think it was about $8. It's basically mesh and it doesn't really hold the sweat too much. It's pretty great. I wear it all the time. It smells right now because I went on a ride this morning. Last thing to consider before you get started is trail etiquette. As a mountain biker, you are at the bottom of the totem pole. You have to stop for other people. You have to stop for horses. You have to stop for hikers. You have to stop for runners. It's your job to make sure that the rest of us look good, that you are getting out of the way of people, stopping when you should stop. Trail etiquette says that downhill riders should yield to uphill riders, but a lot of people don't follow that rule. 
it's kind of nice to be able to do your downhill without having to stop but it's also really nice to be able to do your uphill without having to lose your momentum so when you're out there pay attention to what other people do and be courteous stay off muddy trails when you ride muddy trails it ruins them and it could mess up your bike i love mountain biking because it's really good exercise i basically tricked myself into exercising in the last few years and mountain biking has definitely been the catalyst for that you gotta practice rolling over things to gain some confidence just like anything else in life the more you do it the better you'll get soon you'll be able to roll over some big features just try it even though it intimidates you and see if you can do it if not that's okay try it again next time Doing the hard trails is worth it. Every drop of sweat is worth it. Every sore muscle is worth it. Every time you go out and you're sore the next morning, always worth it. Your hard work and risk will be rewarded. I think I covered everything that you need to know to get started mountain biking. It's super fun, totally worth it. So get outside and give it a try and have fun. Like and subscribe. Bye.